Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, we're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues and today we welcome in Mark Thomas. Yes, Don't Stop the Presses, we've named this. Uh, Mark Thomas is the Executive Vice President and Secretary of the Oklahoma Press Association and uh, it's been a long time uh, since we've had somebody from the Press Association on. We wanted to get Mark on to talk about some of the activities of his association including their rather uh, vigorous activity in trying to make sure that the Open Records Laws and Open Meetings Act are followed in various cities and, uh, and uh, jurisdictions around this state. And that's kind of an ongoing process for them. It's, it's pretty hard to keep the flow of information going. Lots of interesting journalistic studies uh, that we can uh, get into today. And it's all coming up on The Verdict. We we'll hope you'll stay with us. tough neighborhood. There was a lot of drugs and a lot of violence. Really for me to get away was to focus on artwork. It was a way for me to really cleanse myself so I can deal with all the problems that were going on in school and at home. It kept me from crossing that line. Our goal is to make sure that the arts are available to all, that our community is awakened by the arts, that our community is touched by the arts. It's not an organization that's focused on one thing. They're focused on the arts across the board. Chesapeake knows that in order to have a full and complete community, we have to have a strong arts component. Now you have people that understand how important it is and they're really getting involved. It really changes lives and it changes families. You know, eventually it's going to change generations. If you need big accounting firm expertise but aren't happy with the value or level of partner engagement from your current national firm, contact Hogan Taylor. Hogan Taylor provides national level public accounting expertise with high touch local partner service in all areas of tax, audit, business valuation and litigation support. Contact us at HoganTaylor.com forward slash the verdict. Hogan Taylor, big enough to know, small enough to care. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome back, uh, welcome to the set of The Verdict, uh, uh, Mark Thomas, the Executive Vice President and Secretary of the Oklahoma Press Association. Uh, Mark was born and raised in Oklahoma. He has uh, served as a, formerly served as Executive Director of the Colorado Press Association. We were fortunate enough to get him back here to Oklahoma. He's been with the Oklahoma Press Association now for 24 years. He's been inducted into the Journalism Hall of Fame and uh, he uh, uh, received the uh, Ben Blackstock Award uh, recently for outstanding service to the Press Association and anything that carries Ben Blackstock's name is prestigious in my mind. Uh, ben was a, he is a very fine gentleman and we were glad to have him a couple of times, but glad to have you today. Thank you, glad to be here. And we want you to come back when you've got an, uh, an issue for the press. I'd love to. Good. Let's talk about the Oklahoma Press Association first. What's its mission? Well, its mission is, it primarily serves newspapers. Its mission to, is to advance and safeguard the newspaper industry to the benefit of the press and the public. Uh, so we not only take care of the newspapers, but we try and take care of the public. But in a broader sense, mm -hmm. We're concerned about the quality of life for all Oklahomans. And if we can improve the quality of the newspapers they read, we believe we can improve the quality of life 
for all local homeless. I mean, you guys are taking on a big assignment. It's you're a taking big on assignment. the quality of life we're, for the we're, state. We're all in the same but business. In, in right. a sense, you're, you're protecting the First Amendment, but That's you're correct. also looking after the business interests of, of, the, of the publishers because if, if there's no business interest, then there's, there's no business and then there's no, no media. Exactly. Certainly, and newspapers, television, radio stations, they are all corporations that have interests. They need to make a profit to continue to uh, thrive and do their important public roles, so we certainly watch out for all mm -hmm. those interests at the legislature and through training and conventions and meetings. And right. Uh, uh, recognition of excellence through contests and things. We do all those things. Well, what are the hot button issues? If, uh, if, if, if you hear from your board of directors, we've got to do this and that. What, what's this and that? Uh, well, anything that, anything that really challenges the First Amendment or freedom of speech or the five freedoms that are in those, mm -hmm. uh, in the First Amendment, particularly freedom of speech and freedom of the press, but uh, any of those or anything about Open Meetings and Open Records Act, plus we just, it's our, it's our role to keep an eye on governments at all levels, whether they're sewer boards and park boards or city councils, county governments, school boards, all the way up to state government, all the way to the judiciary and the executive branch. Now, are your members uh, representatives of newspapers? Yes, uh, newspapers themselves are the members, thereby all their employees are reporters, advertising salespeople, publishers, they're all, they're all members. Mm -hmm. So there are 200 newspapers in Oklahoma. The 200? Yes. Yeah. Is that growing or, or shrinking? It's growing, uh, actually. Uh, it went through a period of decline where newspapers merged. You might have a morning, evening paper or two papers in the town. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so it declined for a few years, but we have more papers today than we had mm -hmm. three years ago. Is it because and, of the digital revolution? Uh, it's certainly, well, the, certainly the costs of publishing a newspaper uh, have come down and, and the cost of distributing a paper have come down particularly when you're sending it in long distances, you can do those kind of things digitally and save yourself some costs. So uh, they've gotten a little smarter and a little more creative and a little more innovative on how they actually publish a paper. What's the business uh, model like? Or is advertising revenue going up or down? What, what, what's, what's that look like for your members? Well, it's a challenge, certainly, because all of the media and newspapers uh, for, for centuries have been an advertising-based model mm -hmm. and uh, and there are so many ways now for businesses to advertise directly to the public and and we certainly uh, encourage businesses to, to get as many direct relationships with their customers as they can but people need to find out where news businesses are how new businesses operate and so advertising through the newspaper to make new customers aware of uh, your business is is a, a new growing revenue source plus all of our online revenue it's growing by leaps and bounds how do you uh, explain the fact that uh, four five seven or eight years ago all you could read were stories about it, our newspapers dead mm -hmm. because of the, uh, uh, the way that the uh, internets uh, and the cable news and all are operating that uh, that there just isn't a place for newspapers today that seems not to be true I mean you've got more members today than you did seven or eight years ago how do we reconcile those things? Well, it, it, it is interesting. I had a, a, a person of a television station who came out and did an interview with me and several other newspapers because she wanted to interview us before the last one was gone. <laughs> um, and and uh, what she found out on those interviews was she went out on press day and what she found out that the newspaper's not dead, but let it be late by 15 minutes and you have got a mob of pe <laughs> people in the lobby who are mad that they expect it to be there at 2 o'clock yeah. or 2.15. So, uh, newspapers aren't dead. Uh, they certainly have innovation challenges, creativity challenges, and a lot of hard work ahead of them, but they're not dead. Uh, 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 they uh, do a valuable service for their community. Well, you know, I think most of us in the Oklahoma City and Tulsa areas are aware of the, of the giant newspapers that serve our communities. What about in small towns, small town Oklahoma? What's the, what's the media like there? What's, what's the, the well, outlook? Uh, if their town is okay, the newspaper's okay. There are some small towns in Oklahoma that are drying up, yeah. and they need economic development, they need jobs, they need businesses to locate there. Because if you don't have an advertising base and you don't have an economic base, it's very hard to have a school, a bank, or a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And when you start losing those things from your town, your town is going to die. So there are certainly some towns that will lose a newspaper, but there are other towns that are growing mm -hmm. by leaps and bounds, and, and uh, if, if the town's okay, those papers are going to be okay. Well, is there a model, though, where a, a digital newspaper can survive even if they can't afford the, the, the print aspect of it? Well, uh, everybody's working on that and everybody's mm -hmm. trying to find that answer. 
certainly digital editions or replicas of newspapers mm -hmm. have become very popular because people don't want to wait on the newspaper to be mailed to them if they live in California or Oregon or Washington. They want to get it right then. And so digital delivery of replicas of newspapers are becoming a, a, a profitable model uh, to help them get it delivered. But there still needs to be a strong advertising base to help support the local paper uh, to then uh, help them have it digitally delivered around the world, really. The Internet's been a great, a great boost for us to help us get our product delivered around the world at a, at a lower cost than we ever could before. Uh, what's happened to uh, sales at the newsstand? I mean, uh, sales to the reader. Well, the 50 cents, it, uh, 75 cents, whatever the paper costs. Uh, uh, generally, most of them are 75, weeklies are 75 cents a day, dailies maybe 50 cents a day. But sales at the newsstand, oddly enough, are up because people don't want to wait and get it in the get it at home tomorrow. If I put it in the mail on Wednesday and you're supposed to get it to Thursday, they don't want to wait till tomorrow. I'd rather go down and buy it today on the rack, and that's difficult. We would like a, a, a an army of paid subscribers and deliverable households, but when people don't want to wait to get it yeah. at their home, they'll go down to the newsstand newsstand and buy it every day. So that source of revenue is on the increase. Yeah, it, it is on the increase. That's right. Part of the issue, though, for the print media is that there, there is so much free information. Now, information mm -hmm. takes on a, that's a wide definition there because that's a lot right. of it's not reliable. Yet, that's correct. you know, a, a lot of readers can't nef necessarily differentiate between an established journalism entity and right. some person with a blog. Right. You know, if they read it, they think it's, it's, it's just all kind of messes together. That's, that's an issue for journalism and, and the public. It, it certainly is. I mean, one of my favorite quotes is, the problem with the Internet is you can never f never know if what's out there is true. Abraham Lincoln, it says. <laughs> on that. Well, it, it is difficult uh, to know what's, it, what's true and what's not. And that's really why you need professionals in all types of media that can synthesize. And, and I mean, really what the difficult problem is, is that you have to be a 24-hour news machine and you have to get it out right now. People can't wait anymore. They need it right now, and then that's a balancing act between accuracy and expediency. And so we want to be we want to be fast, but we want to be right, and that's really a, a big challenge. Yeah, I, I get faced with a lot of uh, information from from people who say, "How come this is happening?" And I'll say, "Where'd you hear that?" And they'll say, "Well, I read it on the internet." And I say, "Well, <laughs> yeah, that's not happening." But that's, that's but I, and I don't know where they read it, you know, specifically. But I mean, I, but the, the, it's a problem uh, it's that, a, that 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 somehow society is going to have to figure out. It's a big problem, and it's a problem among the younger generation because they only feel like they need to be conversational, and it's it, it may not be totally true, but it was true enough that they could converse about it with their friends. And a lot of the social networks that happen, and, and, and while it has great benefits to help you stay in touch with friends and family and so forth, it turns an entire generation in on themselves. I, I as a young person, blog about what I think, and I tweet about what I think, and I have Facebook. I need fans, followers, and friends because it's all about me. When it used to be about helping other people, now it's about telling other people who, about me and who I am. That's very. That's that's another difficult challenge we face. Yeah. Mark Thomas is with the Oklahoma Press Association. We'll be back with more after this. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible, and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless, and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. I don't want to 
hope for the best. I want to become it. I want you to see my potential. Because I can be more than average. I can be amazing. Because I know the hard way and the right way are one and the same. I will make you proud. And surpass even my own expectations. I will lead. I will lead. I will lead America's energy future. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry. Proud to equip Oklahoma students for greatness. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We're visiting with Mark Thomas of the Oklahoma Press Association. What are the major challenges that the press is facing today? Well, if you're looking at the press as, a, as an entity, uh, really two or three things. I think we're, we're obviously everybody, everybody's facing a challenge of revenues because mm -hmm. we've been an advertising-based medium. We're trying to find a new business model. Uh, we really have a challenge about uh, resources because we, we need good personnel. We need good journalists coming into the system. Uh, and the technological advances and the resources to keep up with those, uh, as well as the resources to stay connected to all of our to all of our uh, readers through all the social media. So really, it's revenue and resources. But I think one of the biggest challenges today is respect. Uh, the public uh, has lost some confidence in the press in general, and uh, some of it's the fault of the press, and some of it is uh, constant carping about uh, the press from whichever political position you come from. It's yeah. never, I mean, politics is a lot like washing windows. No matter which side you're on, the dirt's always on the other side. Huh. Well, uh, so we need to make sure that the public trusts and respects the press and has, a, has a, an understanding of our important and not always popular role. Yeah. The press is not supposed to be popular, uh, but it has an important role, and people need to respect what that role is. Our are Oklahoma's open meetings laws and open records acts, <coughs> excuse me, are they accomplishing their purpose? I think they, they are accomplishing their purpose. They're miles ahead from where we were before those acts were, were put in place. And uh, there are certainly challenges and they are an expanding and, and contracting set of laws that, yeah. uh, that change over time. Uh, and so uh, we have to be out at the Capitol all the time uh, uh, working on uh, those on, on, on behalf of the public uh, to kind of make sure that the public has access to meetings and records. I mean, meetings and records are in the Declaration of Independence. The king said, uh, he, I mean, that one of the grievances was he calls us away to meetings of his convenience, away from our republic records, so we can't def even defend ourselves. And we're not going to live like that. We're going to have a different kind of a country of the people, by the people, and for the people. And the purpose of those two acts, open meetings and open records, are to inform us, help us as citizens stay informed about not only governmental processes, but it says governmental problems. A lot of times when governments have problems, they want to clam up and have a secret meeting or mm -hmm. hide the records. But government's problems are really the people's problems. And government and people need to work together to solve those problems. And that's what the Open Meetings Act and Open Records Act do is they lay the framework on how government and the citizens are going to interact so they can solve joint problems. Um, when, when First Amendment issues come to the state capitol, what type of issues is, are they? I mean, what, 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 what's the legislative agenda for the OPA? Uh, well, in the First Amendment is certainly the, the heart of what the association is about. And uh, the, some of those First Amendment issues and they're not popular issues. The Stolen Valor Act uh, mm -hmm. was a First Amendment issue recently real, ruled on by the Supreme Court. Uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, what are their rights? What happened there? Uh, well, the Westboro Baptist Church has uh, had a Supreme Court ruling says they have a right to be at a certain funerals and protest uh, under freedom of speech. Mm. You're um, talking about the, the controversy about when, right. when church members were protesting at the 
at the funeral of service people who, right. had, who had passed the away Kansas in battle. The Kansas church, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And the legislature wants to set rules that says they, they and you can put time, place, and manner restrictions on speech, uh, but they wanted to put the time, place, and manner restrictions so far away that to essentially block the speech, and the Supreme Court said you can't do that. Um, so, but when at the legislature, when we're restricting someone's First Amendment rights, we think we are restricting their rights, yeah. when in fact we're restricting all of our mm -hmm. rights. We are creating a box, and we are all agreeing to get in it, and that's not exactly uh, how people look at it. They think they're always, I mean, everyone wants free speech, but only for my side. It only works if you have free speech for both sides. So well, a newspaper man can't have, or woman can't have thin skin and, and do very well. They, they're bound to be uh, attacked uh, verbally, if not otherwise, uh, certainly, all the time. Certainly, it's it's a difficult <clears throat> profession, and that's part of the problem with the younger generation. They all want to be PR professionals, and and uh, everybody wants to tell good news. But uh, you've got to have pretty thick skin, mm -hmm. and it's difficult to have friends. Uh, I mean, let's just admit that it's difficult to have good friends mm -hmm. uh, because your friends can be your friends until tomorrow's paper comes out. Yeah. And and uh, but but you know who your friends are and you know who you can rely on. And mm -hmm. uh, so it but it's a difficult business and it takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts and a lot of them are are uh, they they would never admit it, but they're heroes, quite frankly. I I, I see a lot of these microsites popping up and especially in, in suburbs of, of, of large metropolitan cities where people are starting kind of a newspaper digitally actually going out and getting advertisers reporting you mm -hmm. know on 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 local events it may not be hardcore mm -hmm. journalism in a lot of sense but nonetheless it's a community gathering place right. online do you anticipate those types of endeavors becoming part of a, of a press association like yours I, I would think so over the long term you're if you want to encompass the media and you want to encompass people who who have the same goals of trying to improve the quality of life for Oklahomans by improving the quality of the newspapers and the publications they read uh, over the long term I would think so. At, mm -hmm. at this point uh, we're trying to, it's, it's very difficult to, to really define who, who those are. Sometimes they can be a guy yeah. sitting in his mother's basement. Yeah. Uh, and, and perhaps with an agenda that, with, that is not well known. With an agenda yeah. that's not well known and so it, it, it's still in a growing stage but I think certainly, certainly over time, if that person is serving their community up, Warren Buffett just bought 63 newspapers, community newspapers, and he wrote them a letter and he essentially said, you hear about all these things about newspapers and trouble and being dead and so forth, you only have one challenge, be indispensable to your community. If you're indispensable to your community, you don't have to worry about anything else. So if you're a paper product and indispensable to your community, or, or a digital product, an indispensable, uh, you're going to survive. That's how we deal with competition. Just a few seconds we have left. Uh, any sense of how the current Supreme Court is coming down on First Amendment issues? Is it something that gives you concern or heart? Are you heartened by it? Uh, I think they always have a robust debate on both sides of that issue. And, and I love to read the opinions, not just what people have said about right. the opinions. That's very important for us as citizens to do, read the actual opinions. Um, I get a sense that they feel very deeply that America was founded and built on a robust platform of debate and dissent and the ability to argue and, and come to solutions to common problems. And that they will uphold a lot of the First Amendment principles, the five freedoms there in the First Amendment, they'll uphold those. And our job as a newspaper is uh, we need to, when, when we write about things, we need to galvanize those issues so citizens can find common solutions to common problems. Mark Thomas is with the Oklahoma Press Association. Thanks for being a guest on The Verdict. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens.
to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. In Oklahoma, we enjoy a high quality of life due to good, well-paying jobs. Commercial real estate professionals play a significant role in bringing new businesses and investment to Oklahoma. The commercial real estate community has come together to market Oklahoma's commercial properties nationwide through a free public website, okcommercialproperty.com. We are invested in keeping Oklahoma strong and growing because economic development ensures quality of life. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Mark Thomas with the Oklahoma Press Association was our guest. Boy, he's got a lot of different things on his plate. He really does, and the, the press just continues to plug along and, and uh, serve, uh, not necessarily quietly, but serve well. Well, it's going to have to, it's going to have to, at some point, uh, come to some level of, of continuance because you've got so many things working here. This dig yeah. digital revolution about information that's flowing out, a lot of it's free, a lot of it's not free, a lot of it has hidden costs. And the idea that it needs to be accurate and timely, you know, is, is still trying to work its way into the equation. So it'll be interesting to see how, how it looks 10 years from now because it probably won't be like it is today. A couple of websites we want to draw your attention to. First of all, you can get in touch with him at okpress.com. That's okpress.com. And we have a website too, theverdict.tv. Tell us about a guest you'd like to see right here on The Verdict. For Kent, I'm Mick. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.